Again, a very basic example. Entity A acquired 40% in Entity B on 1 January 2020 at a cost of 100,000. Assume that this is an associate. Entity A acquired 20% of the shares in Entity B for 60,000 on 1 July 2021, deemed to be the fair value on this date. Assume control as per RFRS 10 and that this purchase is a business combination as per RFRS 3. Entity B recognized profit of 10,000 for the year ended 31 December 2020 and Entity B recognized a profit for the six month period till 30 June 2021 of 10,000. Accounting policies. Entity A accounts for the investment in associates and subsidiaries at cost in its separate financial statements in terms of RS 27 paragraph 10A. Entity A classified this investment as a financial asset in terms of RFRS 9, guys, not applicable to this scenario. And then the year in 31 December, ignore all taxes, assume no consolidation occurred on date of change in control. Required, perform the journal entries in both records only relating to the information provider. Right, therefore, our first step, we need to identify the change. We know that this is an associate, which is now a subsidiary. We need to apply RFRS 3 for our level 2 students, RS 28, paragraph 22. That paragraph only states, guys, that if this is a subsidiary, we need to apply RFRS 3 and RFRS 10, right? And then our next step, we need to include a timeline to ensure that we understand the scenario. Right, therefore, we have already performed step number one. We're now busy with step number two. Okay, so guys, I want you to focus and think with me. You have the timelines in front of you. Add your journal entries in the separate records of the investor. Remember that this is an associate on 1 January 2020. Therefore, when we look at our timeline for this section, yeah, in our separate records, this is a subsidiary. Therefore, think subsidiary. As per IS27, this is both carried at a cost. Therefore, at acquisition date, in the separate records, we debit the investment with 100000 and we credit our bank with 100000 Why? Because the accounting policy is to recognize this at cost. Then, on 1 July 2021, the Investor purchase an additional 20% at 60,000. Therefore, we debit the investment with a 60,000 and we credit our bank with 60,000. Recognize this at cost. Okay, that's our separate records. But what happens now in our group records? What do we do in the group records? In the group records, this is IS28, we need to equity method accounting. Okay, now what does this mean? At acquisition date, which is always our first journal, we need to include this at cost. But this is already included at cost via our separate records. Then, Next, we need to include the retained earnings portion. Remember, they've recognized 10,000, therefore 4,000, 40%. Or not 40,000, so guys, 4,000. Therefore, we debit the investment in the associate. We credit our retained earnings in our statement of changes in equity with the 4,000. Okay, third journal, our current year. We debit. The investment in the associate, we credit our profit share of the associate with 4,000. 10,000 times 40% and this will be 4,000. Right, now, on 1 July 20.21, the investor, Entity A, purchased an additional 20% plus 20%. Now, what do we do now? From this date, this will now be a subsidiary and we need to apply our principles of RFRS 3 and of RFRS 10. Now, what does RFRS 3 tells us to do? 
if we refer to IFRS 3 paragraph 42, it indicates to us, and let's refer to this paragraph, guys, or to our summarized version. The date when control is obtained. Remeasure your previous equity at fair value. Now, in this example, our previous equity is the 40%. When you look at the left side of the screen for me, please, remember it's this 40%. We need to remeasure this at fair value. But what is the fair value at date of change? They've indicated to us the fair value of 20% is 60,000. Therefore, we are able to determine 40% is double 20%. Therefore, this is 120,000. And this is the fair value. Now, from a group perspective, guys, listen to me. From a group perspective, how do we revalue that? We now know, if you look at our timeline at the bottom, guys, I'm going to include this as number four. We now know that the fair value of the 40% is 120,000. From a group point of view, what is the carrying amount of the investment in our associate? Again, we need to calculate this. This is our cost, which is the 100,000. Remember from a group, which is the journal and the separate records, number one at the top. Then we include our group journal at the bottom, number two, plus 4,000. Just highlight this as you're able to follow 4,000, 4,000, and plus the bottom journal, 4,000, the carrying amount of our associate. 4,000, 4,000. Therefore, we are able to identify that the carrying amount is 108,000. And this is the carrying amount of the investment in associate. This is the amount that you will be able to identify in the statement of financial position of our group. Therefore, minus 108,000. And we are able to identify that we will have a fair value adjustment in our group to the value of 12,000. Okay, so how will this journal look like? We will debit the investment with the 12,000. And we will credit our remeasurement adjustment profit or loss with the 12,000. Right, now let's just take this one step back again. If you look at the separate records, only the separate records, guys, what will the balance be of this investment on 1 July? We are looking at the separate records of our parent. What will the balance be? The balance will be at cost. If we look at our journal entries at the top, Remember, this will be our 100,000 plus the 60,000. Therefore, this will be at cost, 160,000. Okay, now, when we look at our group records, remember, at acquisition date, in terms of RFRS 3, we have to include our elimination journal. What will the balance be of our investment from a group point of view? Remember, we have the 108,000 relating to our investment in associate, which we've determined. And now we've debited this investment with another 12,000. Right, therefore when we look at this, this is the 120,000 fair value of the original 40% plus the 20% purchased on 1 July 2021. And this is the 60,000. And therefore, our amount will be the 180,000. And if we look at our journal entry, guys, we will have to credit the investment with 180,000. 
Right, when you look at the separate records, the journals at the top of your timeline, guys, is there anything new? No. You have been following IS27 paragraph 10 since week one of this year, actually since last year, third year. Okay, therefore there's nothing new in terms of a change. Therefore, I'm not able to identify any additional rules that I need to study. In terms of my group, is there anything new? The only new one is that you need to apply IFRS 3 paragraph 42 and remeasure your previously held percentage at fair value. This is the only new rule here. Then the other one, okay, so guys, not the only one. This is the first new rule. Let me just take this out here. This is the first new rule. The second rule that we need to remember is if there were any amounts previously recognized in OCI, we need to transfer this to our retained earnings.